Uh, yeah, I mean, right now, our main focus is, is getting back on the court. Uh, long season, we uh, we will figure it out. Uh, you know, we had some injuries and obviously some September thing that's kind of detoured us from what we've been doing, be, be wanting to do. Um, and catching our rhythm defensively will come. Uh, we just got to make sure we get back on the floor so we can get healthy. All right, Chase, go ahead. Hey, hey Russ, uh, how are you feeling with the, the quad injury right now? I feel good. What, what have you been able to kind of accomplish in the last few days as you've gotten back out on the court? Um, just running through a few things with the team, um, trying to get my myself back in shape a little bit. Um, you know, just seeing how I feel just each day, trying to wrap up and making sure I take my time. Ava? Hey, Russ, what has the um, kind of down period of the layoff been like for you? You know, Scott always tells us how much you hate not playing, and obviously this is different from injury, but how have you been keeping your mind right? Like, what have you, how have you been spending your time? Well, you know, I see uh, during this time off, I've been able to be at home uh, with my kids and family and wife, uh, which has been good. Uh, I got an opportunity to be able to, uh, you know, witness the inauguration here in DC, uh, which was for me was a uh, an experience in itself um, and something that I will remember for the rest of my life at least. Um, just being able to kind of see all that's going on in the world and see um, how I'm able to kind of sit back and understand and reflect. Um, I feel like when you when you when you rest, you get a chance to reflect on the things you've done and the things that you want to do. Um, and I, it gives me time to be able to do that. And, and the basketball stuff is just good because I'm able to rest and get my body right. Um, after reflecting, I guess, what what do you want to focus on going? I guess, what what was the uh, product of all that reflection? Um, there's, I mean, listen, every day, all day long, every night, uh, my mind is always going on how I can um, change the world. You know, I always... For me, it's always something I believe in. When you dream, dream big. If you fail, fail big. And that's kind of what I believe in. It kind of goes back to my the why not mentality and kind of how I think and how I see the world and how I can see, how I can change things in, in our society. And um, and that's just, my reflection has kind of had me, my mind all over the place as it pertains to that. But um, on the basketball side, just give me an opportunity to better watch some film, understand how I can come back and be better um, as the season goes along. Thanks, Russ. Chris Miller. What up, Russ? How you doing? What's up, yeah. I'm good. Um, you got some healthy bodies. Word on the street, you got some bigs in there. You guys have been so shorthanded for so long. Um, what can these guys in, in the short term, i.e. tomorrow or the Sunday in San Antonio, how can they help you guys like right away? I um, mean, size is what we need, especially now, um, especially with TV going down. Um, that hurts us a lot. Such a huge part of our team. And, um, size is something that we need, especially, you know, just having World Lugs on the big right now. And having Alex and Jordan um, is big for us, um, not just for tomorrow, but going forward. And uh, we'll make sure we implement those guys and make the game easy for them. And uh, that's a part of my job. Uh, I spoke to Brad about, before you guys had a chance to talk to Michelle, about not playing, I think that was Thursday. These days are getting all mixed up with me, but how important was it for you and Brad to communicate with Michelle about the fact that you guys were shorthanded and you wanted to be in partnership with the league to make sure that they understood that playing at that time was not an option? Yeah, I mean, honestly, um, I have an opportunity to be able to be on the uh, committee and, and understanding the ins and outs of kind of uh, the rules and regulations and COVID and the protocols. And um, to me, it was more about health. Um, I think just being able to be out, you know, nine or eight days, whatever it is, without having actual basketball activity, uh, your body don't respond the same way. You can't just come on the floor and start playing with one day of practice. It just um, logically doesn't make sense just for our bodies and our you know, mentally and physically. So that was a, uh, one of the biggest things that I was definitely harping on. Thanks, Russ. Appreciate it. Fred. 
Russ, you guys aren't the only team to miss a bunch of games because of COVID related stuff. It, it, what's the feeling that you get amongst players right now regarding just kind of the feel of this season? Does it, does it feel like a real legitimate season to you guys right now? Um, I don't really know the feel from other players. I haven't really talked to them much, but it's definitely not the same. You know, it's always, I mean, I would say the last year and a half or so, just um, the season has been um, kind of up and down, some stoppages, um, different circumstances, um, no fans. And it's been a lot of things to adjust to. Um, but obviously, as basketball players, you want to compete. Um, it's something that we love to do. So. Uh, we're just trying to figure it out. I think that's the, the biggest thing to all players right now, just trying to figure out the best way to be able to, uh, you know, keep their minds and bodies focused on, on the game. And and are you playing tomorrow? Am I playing tomorrow? I don't know. I don't know. Nice try, Fred. Neil? <laughs> hey, Russell. Uh, I'm just curious, the past few days, you guys have been able to have practice, but mostly conditioning is what Scott has been telling us. What has been your message to teammates? Um, you know, you guys are going to be underhanded for or shorthanded for the next few games, unfortunately. Um, just get your get your get your win back, man. You know, rhythm and all that stuff will come. Um, just because we've been out, we haven't even had a chance to go five on five. Um, and watching the guys, you know, it's only we have seven guys and we have to throw coaches in there. We just don't have enough. And bodies, honestly, just what it is. We don't have enough bodies to be able to even, you know, do the things that we need to do. So we're just taking it day by day and, um, you know, just playing hard. That's one thing that um, about the game, when you play hard, good things happen. So everything else will, will, will take care of itself. Uh, Scotty, word on the street, you got some bigs now that you could actually uh, play with. Can you officially talk about that and what they bring to the team? Yeah, I'm more excited to have, have both of them. Um, right now we need bodies and they're good bodies. I give Tommy a lot of credit with the staff. I uh, was able to get a deal done with uh, Alex and Jordan. Uh, both have good experience. Um, both will um, get opportunities probably. Uh, for sure Alex will, uh, considering we only have right now one five, uh, but he gives us good experience. Uh, gives us uh, Gives us length, uh, defensive protection, a good shooter, good free throw shooter, uh, knows how to play, and he's at a good age. He's, he's at a good age. He's going to get a good opportunity. Uh, I've always uh, liked this game uh, from afar, but it's good to have him here. Uh, you don't realize how big and agile he is. Uh, he did a pretty good job picking things up today. And then Jordan, Jordan's a, a quick athlete that gets off his feet pretty quick. He's, uh, he's brings energy. Uh, he's a, a tough, uh, brings a toughness to him. Um, and he's probably gonna get some uh, decent opportunities until we get the rest of our guys back. Well, let me ask you something about carryover. I mean, it's been, it's been so long since you've had the group together, but there were some things that you were doing well uh, during the last six, you know, going three and three, we talked about the lack of turnovers that you had like in the last six quarters. Can any of that stuff translate back tomorrow or is this kind of just you're hitting the reset button on the entire season? I, quite honestly, I, I'm not sure. I know one thing we're going to get great effort. Uh, we know we haven't played in you know two weeks. That's a long time. Uh, that's a very long time. Uh, but there's no excuses. We're, we're excited to play. We're going to go out there and give a great effort. We're going to give ourselves a chance uh, uh, to compete. And, and I think it's going to come down to we, get, we got to, there's going to be some rust. I know that. There's going to be some spots on the, during the game where we might be a little tired. I might have to call some quicker timeouts. Uh, I hope not. I hope, we, I hope we can just start, you know, playing where we left off. Thought we were playing decent basketball. We lost a couple of tough ones. Um, but Russell then again looked good today. So he's, he's building up. Uh, don't know um, if he plays tomorrow or not, but he's, uh, he's definitely progressing in the right direction. That's another uh, uh, silver lining. To, you, know, you hate to miss six games because nobody really benefits from it, but uh, it allowed some of the guys to, that have been beat up a little bit Get, to get healthy. Russell, you forget about his finger. 
dislocated that pretty bad, but we don't necessarily have to talk about that now because that extra time helped that out as well. Fred. Scott, Scott, whether Russell's back tomorrow or the game after that or whatever, do you, do you anticipate he's going to be able to get to the rim better than he was during the seven games he's already played this year? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, that's the one thing that was uh, preventing him was his, um, was his leg. I mean, that's why he, he had to do what he had to do. And with him, he's, he's definitely – he wasn't himself. Uh, I knew that. He knew that. Uh, like I said, it happened in training camp. Uh, and then it happened a couple of times while he was playing. Just uh, he fought through it, and that's what he does. He plows through things that a lot of guys don't do. Uh, and a lot of guys uh, don't, aren't willing to put their game on the line that they're not going to be at their best because you, you get scrutinized and you get, and you know, that's what the league does. That's what everybody, that's what we all do. We all look at it and, 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 and dissect it and figure out why he's not doing, but he's, he wasn't himself and he will, he will get back. It's going to take him some time, you know, whether he plays tomorrow, the next game or the next game after that, it's going to take him some time to, to get, get into rhythm. But I will say this, the last three or four days or three days that we've had, uh, he's, he's looked pretty good and he's building up and going in the right direction. Chase. Scott, what, what are kind of the final hurdles that um, Russ needs to get over to return to a game? Is he playing through contact and, and running and doing all those things? Well, it all just basically just comes down to how you feel the next day after a good load, a good workload. And and he had he had in the last couple of days, and then he came back, which was great today, came back feeling pretty good. Today was a light day for everybody. Uh, and then we're going to just continue to – uh, monitor him how he feels the next day. If he feels great, you know, then we can make some decisions. Then, if he doesn't, we can always wait another game or two or three. I mean, it doesn't really. It's. I mean, it's. I like them to play. You know, every game, but it's and, and the next game. But we got to really. We're going to be patient, and, and when he's ready, we all we all will know. He will know. He'll be the first to know. He knows his body better than anybody. And he, but he, he said he's feeling good today, so that's a good sign. What about uh, Neto? Uh, did not practice today. Uh, just was in the the training room getting getting work done. Uh, don't know his status tomorrow. Uh, let's just see how he feels tomorrow. Neil. Hey Scott. Uh, both you and Brad uh, talked about you know conditioning and you know if you're not in condition, it's higher chance of injury. Based on what you've seen so far and the practice that you guys been, have been able to get in, do you think that, you know, hopefully that's a concern that's no longer as prominent? And also, you know, you like to keep Brad at like 36 minutes or so. Do you potentially see keeping guys under uh, more increased minutes restriction just because this is all crazy? Well, I, I think the, that last game that was postponed, uh, one of my, uh, Milwaukee game, I guess last night. Um, that helped. I don't see a, a, a problem going forward. I mean, they're not. I mean, it's going to be some some rust and, and conditioning can improve and it will improve, but um, it's not going to put them in a position that they're going to they're going to um, you know injure themselves. We would not. I would not do that. They nobody. The league would not allow it. That's why we had that extra couple of days. You know, the last the last three days were really conditioning practices. Um, didn't we didn't do a lot of things um, to add to the group? One, we didn't have enough bodies, but we did. We wanted to make sure that they got some good run in. They got some good conditioning, just like yesterday. Um, like I said, that one of the first times I've seen where an NBA team will run a seventeen after practice, that's just the leadership that we have. And they know, you know, that was, um, we know we needed an extra little push after practice and that just blew everything out. Uh, but I think going into tomorrow's game, the conditioning should be pretty good. Alex, welcome back to the DMV, man. How did uh, all of this kind of work out for you to uh, reach an agreement with the Wizards? 
Yeah, after, after I got caught with Toronto, I had uh, a few teams reached out. Um, so I had like two, three teams that reached out, and uh, you know the, the Washington, all, all the coaching staff, uh, Coach Atkins, Ryan Richmond, the, the you know my guys from Maryland. So it was a kind of easy decision coming here. And I, I mean the role here is you know the where TB is out, you know it's definitely going to be some opportunities and minutes to play. Fred. Uh, hey Alex, I uh, was just wondering if you could if you could expand a little bit. I, I know you mentioned uh, Da and and Ryan as two guys. What what was your appeal uh, or what was the appeal of the Wizards to you? I mean, just being back in the DMV area, uh, you know, I got a lot of family friends out here. Plus, you know, the team. Uh, I mean, I think it's just a great opportunity building forward too. Um, you know, great fit. You a uh, chance to play with you know Ross and uh, uh, Bradley. Uh, you know, two all-star players. I mean, it's a, I feel like it's a great opportunity. We can turn it around, turn it around, and you know, still make a push for the playoffs. Neil. Hey, Alex. Um, I'm curious. You know, it's very quick transition for you to go from one team to another, and you know, the Wizards have dealt with their own you know craziness over the past couple of weeks. How easy is it or how difficult is it to just get accustomed to a new team right now? How many games does that usually maybe take? Probably like, I would say one, two games, kind of just, you know, figure out the defense, defensive schemes and, uh, you know, you, you know, learn all the plays. But, you know, I've been in the league, it's my eighth year. So it's kind of, you know, all teams run the same sets and just call different, you know, just the same actions, just you know, little tweaks and just call, you know, different goals. But once you, you know, learn that stuff, I think one, two games, and it should, be, it should be fine. Chase. Hey, Alex, uh, welcome. Um, what do you think you need to do to kind of earn a, a significant role on this team and, and, and kind of make it make it a long-term fit? Uh, just same stuff that I've been doing, you know, protecting the paint, uh, getting guys open, like get Bradley open and get Ross going downhill, and, you know, you just – I'm just trying to fit in and, you know, make, make winning plays. Hey, Jordan, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, kind of getting thrown into the, the fire here. How, how much do you think you could uh, you help the team out tomorrow in San Antonio? Um, I think I can just bring exactly what I do well, and that's just playing hard defense. Um, obviously, you know, with this team, Brad Russ, uh, they, they, they have the scoring part uh, down. So I think I just need to bring uh, my uh, defensive skills, everything I learned um, from being uh, the player I've been the whole my whole life and just bringing that here. Can you describe your basketball journey just the last two seasons and just kind of everywhere you've been and just waiting for opportunities? It's been like 2020, honestly. It's just, it's, it's been like a lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of craziness. Um, uh, I was here about almost a year ago for the G League to play for the DC uh, G League team. And I practiced one day and then the season got shut down. Um, uh, then I was on Cleveland, got uh, traded to the Lakers, Wade. Um, it's, it's, it's been crazy, but I'm, I'm just happy to still be where I'm at right now. Fred. Yeah, J Jordan, uh, you mentioned a little bit some of the stuff that uh, that you think you can bring. I mean, they just don't have a lot of bigs right now. You, you and Alex are now two thirds of the bigs on the roster. Mm -hmm. um, what, what specifically in terms of just being out there on the court, like in terms of basketball traits, do you think that you're going to be able to help them with? Um, I think defensively, uh, just being a versatile uh, player that I am, uh, I believe I can go out one through five. So, you know, there, there's a guy who needs to be uh, contained, controlled a little bit. Um, rather he's just killing us in a one-on-one -on -one or pick and roll. I think, you know, if you have a guy like me who can just switch out, it makes the, um, the defensive the defensive scheme so much simpler. Now we're not breaking down. Now we're not at a disadvantage of somebody coming down here for just switching and things like that. Um, and then just, just being the shot blocker that I've always been, you know, being the rim protector. Um, I think just my presence on the floor when I'm blocking shots or just changing shots, I feel like that changes the whole game for my team. Chase. Hey man, congrats on, on signing with the Wizards. Um, you, you mentioned your journey. Uh, how do you, given all that, how do you view this opportunity and, and just the fact that you're getting another chance at the NBA level? 
Um, I mean, it's a blessing. Um, uh, you know, like I said, like last year, last 2020 has been just really crazy. Um, a lot of things getting shut down. Meek and uh, traded to the Lakers last minute and waged. You know, that kind of messed up a lot of things as far as trying to get a training camp deal and get other teams to see me. Um, but I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that I have. Um, like, I, like I said, I was here last year with the G League team. So for them to bring me back, give me another try, um, I think it shows they have a little confidence in me. So I, like, now I got to just show them that I'm worth it. Ava. Hey, welcome. Um, just as you're talking about kind of your your journey here over the past couple of seasons, does it actually matter coming back to a place like DC where you have some familiarity with the coaching staff? Does that help just you kind of get your feet under you at all? Or does that not matter? Are you just kind of like, man, I've been so many places that I could I could fit in wherever? Uh, no, I mean, I think uh, having some familiar faces around always makes things a lot easier. Um, just make more comfortable. You know, if you walk in a room with Ten people you don't know, you just kind of weird. But you know, if you had that one person, you just, you know, you can calm down. You can go stand next to them, talk to them. You had that one person you connect with, and then you slowly start uh, getting it with other people. So, um, I, it's, it's a lot of people here already that I know. So uh, I'm not super uncomfortable with the uh, situation or environment. Um, I still got to learn some things and some people. Um, but like I said, a lot of people, you know, NBA world is so small, basketball world is so small. You, you've been around these people at some point in your life, uh, basketball career. So. I'm, I'm not too uncomfortable here. Neil? Hey, Jordan. Um, you know, the team in general, including yourself, including Alex, you know, it's been a chaotic couple of weeks. Um, Russ is saying, you know, we want to go out there, we want to play hard. You know, that's what you guys can control right now, given that everything is coming together so quickly. How easy is it for NBA players to just, you know, go out and play hard? You might not know all the finesse and the little things, the details there, but to just go out and compete, how easy is that to do? Um, playing hard is to me, it's, it's always the easiest thing because it's, it's just about whether you want to do it or not. You know, it's not like making a shot where you can do things perfectly and you still might miss. You can play hard, you play hard. It's, there's no, there's no gray area between that. So, um, I mean, that's exactly right. If you go out there and play hard and do the right, um, play hard, the right things. I mean, the right things always happen to come. So, um, and as far as like um, being comfortable, I think you know, NBA is basketball at the end of the day. You know. So it's, it's I, like Alex said before, you know, a lot of teams run the same stuff, same set. Um, it's just about the little defensive schemes that some teams might do, and it's just different names for it. So that stuff you have to pick up. Um, that might take a couple of days, maybe a week or so. Um, like I said, it's, it's, it's just basketball at the end of the day.